Hello and welcome everyone to a new Heroes of Mind Magic 3 of one of the Abyss video where in this one we're going over every single demoniac yes a demoniac tier list and this one we're being joined by Ame of H3 and Feral Rage Awesome Happy to hear to be here Lexi Yeah feeling average Ame yes I'm not feeling that good but let's go yeah, in general, I think uh, the Maniacs are one of the best mind heroes in the game. Um, outrivaled by Beastmasters, uh, Overlords, and uh, Barbarians, but still really competitive. Do you like? Do you guys like them? Mm -hmm. Some of them are really good to start off with. I think they're good to begin, but not sure how well they develop. Mm, yeah, because they don't get Earth Magic as likely as the other guys, right? Yeah, but they, they do have a decent chance of getting navigation, so we can't forget that. <laughs> True for your Seven Seas exploration campaigns, right? Yeah, and uh, the fine magic is a bit lame, but yeah, otherwise you're alright. Okay, then let's off, start off with Cal. This guy is the archery scouting dude that ends up having three stacks of um, gogs immediately into the game. He's usually your go-to choice when actually playing this faction, and he can develop into a good main. Do you guys like him? Uh, like, just because he starts off with that many gogs, he's always gonna be good. Doesn't matter what he develops into, he's always your go-to. But... I feel like the archery is the only good thing about him. Kind of useless. He'll make a decent side hero later on. Yeah, he, because he's likely to roll into logistics, so he doesn't develop like that badly. And even as a pure my dude, he's usually decent. I would put him at about 8 there, what do you guys think? Uh, I don't know if there is a the, the maniac that should be an S tier at all, so 8 tier is like the highest it can be. So I don't know, well, I'll say well, closer to B than A. I would say... Yeah, Lexi, yeah, I gotta say, if we're thinking about like a whole game type of a thing, like if it's, if it's not just for, for the Inferno Town, then I think it's not going to be any higher than A. Okay, so you, think, so you say that his army does not carry him to A tier? I mean, if you're playing Rampart, will you ever main him, or if you're playing Dungeon or anything? I recently had a good castle game on him. Oh, that's castle. Yeah, who cares, man? You can. Okay, I agree. I agree. We can, we can put him in beat there. Next up is Fiona. I really love this hero. Yeah. She immediately. She's the only hero in the game to start immediately with advanced offense. Whenever you buy her, your map actually lights the hell up. And you mean advanced scouting, right? Yeah, and 1k experience is gonna net you 100% expert scouting. I feel like that is actually notoriously good on a side hero, and she can even develop into a pretty decent main hero. Yeah, see, I, I immediately think she's amazing, especially because 100% of the games I play are one hero JO, and scouting is ridiculously good. Um, she's a walking Redwood Observatory, so I think she's amazing. Like, one of the best heroes in this list by far. I actually would put her at 8 there. Yeah, I would actually put her above Cal as well. Yeah. I would put her out even to be S tier just because of the scouting. Nah, I would say it there, I would say it there. Next up is Ignatius, the tactics and interference dude. Mm -hmm. um, in Shadow of Death, he was actually in the resistance, but the resistance was changed into interference, and now we have him as the interference dude. Um, having tactics early on and having the free stocks of Vimps as well is actually pretty decent. And lately he's actually been very well re represented in Jeebus King because he can actually outspeed Wolf Raiders in pickets on Inferno Terrain. Pretty good. What do you guys think? I would rate him exactly the same as Cal because I think it's the same reasons why Cal's good. He's got a really good starting army. I mean, the rest of it is pretty average, but just by virtue of that, I'll say he's equal to Cal. I would say that if, uh, for a main hero, to France and Tactus is going to make for like a more main type of a hero, possibly. Yeah, but are you really willing to invest that much in an Ignatius to go late game for the resistance to really matter? Yeah, because um, Ignatius' strategy relies on him actually using the imps for the Wolf Raider, so you got to be investing into him some no matter what. And also he has like the better basis for a main than a Cal as well. Uh, Lexi, are you simping for the Shadow of Death hands? Mm, I don't know if he's actually good in Shadow of Death. I never. I only played competitively in Hora. Well, if Ame says he's good in some way, then he technically must be not that good. So you also gotta remember that. Yeah. Be. Thank you for your insight. <laughs> Next up is Marius. Marius Jeez. is a demon specialist that starts off yeah. with advanced armor. 
So basically, I would say she's like a really good canvas for a hero. She can actually get like back to back a best slot skills and be like one of the best heroes in the game. And also really good at start. And the demon specialty is also very good for demon farming games in some slow maps still. I would say she's one of the best um, might heroes to actually main. Yeah, 100% agreed. I mean, advanced armor, she's a poor man's, you know, Mafala. I think she's good. Yeah, her but, only issue is the fact that she can roll for something like really bad on level 3, right? Yeah, uh, I was going to uh, point that out. Okay, yeah. sorry, Throwing I'm a dice in her, but if you hit it, she's amazing. Yeah, she's usually worth investing at least a few levels in tier. Especially because of how high the chances of getting stuff like offense and um, logs are on these heroes. It's unlikely you're going to get screwed over to her. Actually, I want to put her at S tier. Contentions? Really? Mm, yes, yeah. contentions. Risk factor. 100% contention. <laughs> really? Okay, okay. So, a the best demoniac, but S tier means like godlike. She's not there. Okay, okay. A tier. I would say above Fiona. Not too sure about that, Lexi. Okay. Uh, next up is Nymus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nymus is very, very similar to Marius. She starts off with advanced offense and says uh, instead of specializing for the um, uh, demons, she instead specializes in pit fiends. Actually, we lit aside pit fiends in recent times, so I would say she's solid C tier. Whoa, I how can like, she be C tier if Marius is, is A tier? Are you crazy? I'm I feel joking. like there's some bias here. I feel like there's some yeah, bias what the here. hell? I mean, advanced offense versus advanced armor. It's like almost the same thing. Just one's aggressive, one's defensive. And that's what two tiers. Yeah. yeah, why would you put her in C? She's obviously the D. I was going to say she's ahead of Marius because hitting things is better than getting hit by things. Um, the way that I would see it is I would, I would, I, if I were to like get a, a side hero to farm, um, a hive or something, I would probably want Marius more than Nymus. And if I were to main something, then yeah, probably Nymus over Marius. I would say that they're really, really close. Um, but I'm going to yeah, put her be, uh, just a little bit below, below Marius. And here's my reasoning. Okay. Listen to me here. Whenever you're maining a demon farming game, Marius specialty actually does quite a bit for you. And because of her more potential to be main, I would say that she's probably a little bit better. How often do you have a game like this? Um, like very many 6 and 10 games, h 3 one games usually tend to go like this. You haven't whoa, played those maps in like 6 months. Shut Literally. I did, okay. I <laughs> JT, JK, and JO, and Johnson. <laughs> But what I do, <laughs> I do respect Wait, Marius. Is this like 2023 plans? What are we talking about here? Well, yes, 2023 plans. Ooh, sneak peek into the next year. Okay, well, think you have next decade in mind. Sure, put it there. Okay, uh, next up is we have Octavia. She's a gold specialist, 350 gold specialty per day. And also she starts off with Scholar, but no book. And she also has offense immediately into the game. Uh... Mm -hmm. Take it away. Put it this way. If you're looking for a hero to delete to make space, Octavia is the one you delete first. No. I'm going to disagree here. Yeah, I will disagree here strongly. She has the gold bonus, Feral. Yeah. If anything, you want to keep her for the gold. that really well? I mean, this worth 350 gold a day. <laughs> <laughs> you asked, we answered. She doesn't bring anything of value but a bit of basic offense. That's it. I mean, as a She's... side, like, uh, you're usually pretty happy to see, like, a 350 gold hero uh, on your roster. And also, you get the benefit of being able to trade the spells, albeit at a cost of a spell book. And also, if you were to take fights on her, she has two, two my stats to begin with, while also having uh, uh, offense immediately into the game as well. So, she's actually, like, a very well-rounded side hero that can actually do many good things for you, and is just already valuable by existing. Okay, I don't think that's true, yeah. I would yeah. say that she's not anything special, but she's probably not really low either. So somewhere below, like low B tier. Do you think she's on the same tier as like a Cal or Ignatius? Um, she's not specializing in the same things as Cal and does not do the things that Cal does well. However, by exist, uh, I mean at the things that she does do well, like being a pretty good side hero, she is actually pretty cool. Okay. Like yeah, in a different way. Then Cal, but still decent. Okay, so next up is we have Pyre. Pyre is the hero that starts off without Gogs, but instead starts with a Ballista, specializes in that Ballista, and also gets uh, logs alongside her artillery. 
I'm going to go ahead and say... Gone? I'm sorry, Carol. I'm going to go ahead and say she's the best hero in the whole demoniac category. Ooh. Okay, explain. Explain. Well, obviously she has the ballista, so if you're playing a really poor map, you kind of want that ballista to help you out in some occasions, you know. And the logistics is always useful. Even if she's a side hero, she will have a lot of movement. Even if she's main, she will have some damage output and stuff. Okay. I think she's decent. I, I could probably use that same logic to, to say the reasons why she's not good. You start off with one less stack in your army because she has a ballista. You'd much rather get her as like a third or fourth hero in her tavern. Yeah. And you, you would never like choose her to start to it. So I think just by that virtue, she's not as dear. Yeah, the the thing, again, you want yeah to she's, she's really, really good in scenarios where you're like pretty poor and limping in the start of the game. And that, but then again, she's gonna make sure you're limping so you can use it. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, she does start with and artillery specialist on a ballista hero is good. But I, yeah. uh, I think, uh, this, uh, I think this is how it is. Uh, back on Shadow of Dev Days, when you were actually not guaranteed um, army on your hero. She actually used to be really good and consistent, and also before the logistics was nerfed as well. In Shadow of Death, she was actually like pretty godly, but in Horn the Abyss, she actually fell out of favor pretty dramatically. Um, yeah. So I would actually but put a C there. Uh, D? Did you just say D? I said C. Still, you gotta consider the fact that you could be playing her like on Tower or something. But I she wouldn't main a... her on Tower. Yeah. The side hero. As a man, maining him as yeah, a side hero. If the ballista, have to her. if the ballista was an um, already good enough thing, then Gerwolf would be good, but he's not. Yeah, I mean the fact that she has a ballista is great to take it away and put it on your main, not to use it on her. That's what I mean. Yeah, That's what I mean. Yeah, but the thing is, is that she takes away one of the critical stacks of Inferno faction. You uh, can't really I lose think. the gogs. Meanwhile, Gerwolf is actually better because you're not really that worried about losing Lizaman, but you are definitely really worried about losing gogs. Yeah, I mean, think about it. If you say you start off with Kel and the first hero in your, in your tavern is a pyre, you're not happy. Yeah. Okay, guys. Uh, guys, I will settle for B tier. Okay, C tier it is. B tier. There we Next go. Next up is we have the Rashka. <laughs> Rashka is a hero that's actually really, really weird, okay? He has Wisdom and Scholar, a full mage setup, but despite this, he has the um stat line of a mind hero and of course doesn't have a book um he usually debates people to actually transfer spells without a book and whenever that happens you hit yourself he's just like oh no he's not a heretic um, yeah that kind of thing just a quick question mr streamer are you speaking out of experience yes mm. okay take it away I, I think this is the easiest ft i've ever seen uh not really much to add there this guy doesn't do anything. He's not a mate. He's not a side hero. He's not a main hero. He does nothing. He's horrible. Sorry. It's yeah. a mistake. I, kind of um, yeah. I don't see the F tier. Where's the F tier? Um, That's reserved only for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's reasonable. That's reasonable. <laughs> Next up is Zeron. Uh, Zeron is the double specialist. He's not available usually. However, he's a campaign hero that can be enabled in certain templates. Uh, MKC had some templates that actually allowed him to be there. He has leadership and tactics. Um, I would say that leadership is kind of out of uh, flavor for the uh, for Inferno. But... It makes no sense for this guy to have leadership. He has a small specialty. You want to hit things with devils. They give him leadership? What the hell? I mean... The... It's kind of smart because, you know, whenever you hit things, hitting things another time is, like, pretty smart, right? Yeah, 8%, come on. I like any of the might things, offense or armor would have made a lot of sense in this guy. But leadership just feels feels like such a waste of skill on him. Yeah. Um, anyway. I'm about any, to blow your mind. Yeah? Let me tell you this. Imagine you're playing some role play, you know, you're playing some Inferno against some castle action, you know, and you're playing Xeron, and all of a sudden you have some Arc Devils. Oh, look, your opponent has some Archangels. Guess you what? You match now. speed 18 against speed 18. This is a bad the example. You bring back BTS Archangels. I actually do think that the specialty is pretty relevant if you're maining a double boss tag. The specialty actually gives you flat damage, which is very, very mm -hmm. valuable, I think. So, what yeah. is the special? Um, it gives you plus one speed and actually flat damage, which um, you know scales really well with your attack bonuses and everything. A very, oh, very... I... 
Are you sure about that? Just looked it up. So they get plus four attack, two defense, and one speed. Are you sure they get the, the flat diamond? Okay. Um, I might be wrong. Yeah, actually, you're right. You're right. I mistook them for something else. Oh, okay. yeah, Behemoth. Solid, solid roleplay potential. Not a really good hero. I would say he's decent. Like, I leader, but I, leadership and tactics are both, like, tier 1 skills on a pretty decent hero that rolls up for, like, decently good skills. Demonics always, always, almost always rolls offense and logs. You have logs, offense, tactics, leadership, that's a good hero. If you roll yeah, you're logs right. and offense, yes. They're, like, super likely to do so as a demoniac. I think your cat is disagreeing, mate. But then that same t that same logic applies to every single hero on this list. Mm, no, because their sound skills don't really. Um, for example, Nimus and um, Marius doesn't don't have that really big um, gap in level three where they actually uh, have a really high potential to roll for something bad. And most of the other heroes starts off with unideal skills as well. <sighs> and so, so what are you thinking then in terms of the list for this guy? A plus. You seem to have high, high thoughts of him. A plus. What is that? A plus. Oh, what? Yeah. Oh, this is going to be controversial. Oh, no. This is like, what's the Mighty Gorgon? Why? <laughs> this guy. This, is the Mighty Gorgon. this guy starts off with two high tier skills and rolls into other high tier skills. He starts off with two okay two skills. Of hell Tactics is tier one for sure every time. Yeah, and leadership is it? Leadership tier two. Yeah, tier one and tier two. Who does better in the demonic list? Alexi, you said you don't like uh, Pyre. She doesn't start with Gogs. Xeron also doesn't start with Gogs. Oh, wait, what does he start with? Uh, two stacks of Hellhounds, I believe. And according to you your list, correctly, Hellhounds are not the highest rated tier units on your list. So by that logic... Okay, okay. So what are you guys thinking? I was honestly going to say C, but I think I'm going to be outvoted here. I think it's C as well, to be honest. Okay, you guys suck at the video game. <laughs> Justice for the co-streamers. Okay, guys. Thank you for watching this tier list. I hope you guys enjoyed. Check me out live on Twitch. I stream almost every single day. Um, and thank you to the folk that actually joined me on this tier list. You guys did your best. You disagreed with every point I made. I would say you're welcome, but I have regrets now. Okay. Uh, you'll be coming back for the next one, right? Definitely. Doubt uh, it. Okay. I mean, yeah, of course. Of course. Ta -ta.